hi so it's time for wednesday night story time and um, we're having some animals that are going to be coming to the library on saturday so we're going to do um, a story time about goats so um there should be some three bully gruff goat gruff and the goat trainer and then some fun facts about goats so let's enjoy So this is the three bully goats, and its author is Kimmelman Leslie. Will Terry. So, once upon a time, there were three bully goats, Ruff, Ruff, and Top. There they are. They had a good time going, grazing day after day in a big grassy meadow next to a rushing river. They were such big bully goats that no one dared come too near, even though there was plenty of metal to share. We don't share, Tuff growled at the other animals. So everything was cool, except the three bully goats weren't happy. So I got their way, but they weren't happy. I wonder why. This other side of the river looks better, complained Rob. Meadows, even grassier. But how do we get there? Asked Ruff. There's an ogre guarding that creepy old bridge. Just one ogre? <laughs> Scoffed Tuff. Big deal. We're the three bully goats, rough, rough, and tough. We can take on one puny ogre. Now, the ogre that lived under the bridge was kind of puny, but he was cute too, and really nice. He was friends with everybody, that is, until the smallest bully goat tossed his head and started across the river. Who's that coming over my bridge? The ogre asked cheerfully. It is I, Bully Goat Gruff, answered Gruff. Who's asking? Oh no, little ogre had heard about the bully goats. His ears quivered, his feet trembled, and he pulled on a purple pearl. Even the youngest of those three bully goats looked big and mean scary. Keep going. <laughs> Please keep going, little ogre whispered, crossing his warty green fingers, but no such luck. Exactly in the middle of the bridge, he heard the hoofsteps stop. What's going to happen? The smallest bully goat stuck his face right down under the bridge. You're the ogre, he jeered. I'm gruff, and I'm me. I'm really gruff. And you, you're just a powder puff. Now stop squawking, or I'll bunt you from here to Brazil. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. The bully goat continued across the bridge. Little Ogre didn't even get a chance to tell him not to trample the wildflowers and to watch out for the baby animals. Sure enough, 
the smallest woolly goat wasted no time trampling the sweet grass and chewing up the buttercups. Then he butted a couple of baby bunnies out of his way. Woohoo, he sent them reeling. Wow. Meanwhile, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, a medium sized bully goat trotted across the bridge. He looked bigger than his brother and scarier and way meaner. Little Ogre took a deep breath. Who's that coming across my bridge? He asked. Who wants to know? Snarled Ruff. <laughs> I'm just, just, just asking, stuttered Little Ogre. But, but, but because I'd like to be, 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 be for, for, for friends. Friends? <laughs> Said the medium sized bully goat. I'm Ruff and I'm me. I'm really Ruff. And you, you're just a powder puff. Now, stop squawking, or I'll butt you from here to Brazil. And trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. The bully goat crossed the bridge to the meadow on the other side. Careful with the wildflowers and the baby animals, little ogre called after him softly, but Ruff wasted no time trampling the sweet grass chewing up the daisies. Then he butted two baby deer out of his way and went to join his brother. Oh, those poor baby deer. Trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap. The third bully goat headed straight for the bridge. He was the biggest, scariest, and sure looked like he was the meanest of the three brothers. He was so big that the bridge swayed and groaned under his hooves. Who's are coming across my bridge? Squeaked out little ogre trying not to faint. What do you mean your bridge? The third billy goat answered then added. I'm tough and I'm mean. I'm really tough. And you, you're just a powder puff. Now, stop squawking, or I'll butt you from here to Brazil. With rude and haughty toss of his head, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, trip, trap, off went tough in a huff. <sighs> Little Walker began to cry. He had tried being friendly. He had tried being polite. Nothing had worked with those bully goats. Rough, rough, and tough. I've had enough, he said aloud. He thought and thought. What can one little ogre do? Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch, went his fingers. Tip, tap, tip, tap, went his toes. Snip, snap, snip, snap. He snapped his warty fingers and thumbs. I got it! Little Ogre splashed over to the far side of the bridge and called loudly after the third bully goat. Yoo-hoo! Tough! The tallest grass is usually the tastiest. Little Ogre had remembered something. There were some baby animals in the tall grass who didn't need his protection at all. Sure enough, the third bully goat wasted no time prancing straight to the tallest grasses in the meadow, uprooting wildflowers as he went. Suddenly, he spotted four furry baby baby skunks and stopped short, a gleam in his eye. He wanted one, two, three, four skunks, heads over paws, sending them tumbling across the grass. Oh, I'm bad, he exclaimed. Then he called, hey, Grump, Grump, come on over here. 
as Rough and Rough ran up to join their brother, the third bully goat chanted, I'm tough and I'm mean, I'm really tough. And you all, you're just balls of luck. Now stop. Before he could finish his song, the little skunks brushed themselves off and squealed. Should we use our stuff? They turned their backsides to the three goats, raised their tails, and ah, what a smell, <laughs> what a stench. What a way to pay those bullies back. The little skunks laughed <laughs> their stinky heads off and all the animals of the meadow joined in laughing and chanting. Hip, hip, hooray! We called their bluff. So long, bully goats, rough, rough, and tough. And the three smelly bully goats, they were so embarrassed, they galloped madly <laughs> out of the meadow cross the bridge and far, far away, maybe as far as Brazil, never to bully anyone again. <laughs> High five, little ogre. High five, skunk. So I hope you enjoyed that three bully goats gruff, the little takeoff and the three bully goats gruff story. And we have another fun story. Tell me in, um, uh, leave a comment um, about what you thought of that story. I thought it was lots of fun. So um, you're gonna enjoy another story. And this one is about the goat trainer. You ever hear of training a goat? Can you train a goat? Let's see. So let's enjoy that story. Libby Wimley, goat trainer. She's trying to pull a sock out of the mouth by Amy Cobb, illustrated Bill Cox by Alexandra Neonakis. Mm -hmm. Chapter one, pet show. Libby Wimbley and her friends were excited. It was time for the school's annual fall festival. There were fun games. There were also cool prizes. And there was Libby's favorite event, the pet show. Whoa, look at all those dogs and cats. There's a parrot. Whoa. Look at that cat, Becca said. I didn't know cats could catch frisbees. Me neither. But my favorite animal is the dog that holds socks with her nose, said Mason. Libby smiled. I wish I had a dog like that when it's time to sort my laundry. How can Mason laugh? Then Mason asked, what's your favorite animal, Libby? Libby thought for a moment. She wasn't sure. What's your favorite animal? There was the goldfish that swam through a tiny hoop and the colorful parrot that said, bonjour. Libby had never heard a parrot say hello in French before. Bonjour. I like them all, Libby finally said, but none of them are as smart as Elvis. Your go? Becca asked. Libby nodded. Then she got an idea. Maybe she could teach Elvis some tricks. Her friends could help. Serious Business, Chapter Two. On Saturday, Becca and Mason went to the farm where Libby lived. They found Libby in the pasture with Elvis. Hello, 
hello, Libby waved. You're just in time to see the goat Fred trainer extraordinaire in action. Here she is. Becca and Mason both smiled. What trick will you teach Elvis first? Becca asked. Libby helped up a frisbee. Let's show Elvis how to play. Libby tossed the frisbee to Mason. Then Mason threw it to Becca. When Becca caught it, she sailed it back through the air to Libby. See, Elvis, it's easy, Libby said. Catch. Hmm. What do you think the goat thinks? But Elvis didn't catch the frisbee. It flew right past his horns and landed with a butt on the grass. Elvis pawed it with his hoofs. I don't think Elvis likes the frisbee, Mason said. Libby shrugged. Let's try another trick. The dog of the pet show folded socks. I bet Elvis can too. What do you think of Elvis? She patted and she pulled a pair of socks from her pocket. But Elvis began nibbling on them. Hmm. Becca and Mason laughed. But Libby did it. Being a goat trainer extraordinaire was a serious business. Chapter three. Silly goat. Libby tried a different trick. Elvis, say bonjour. She even held up an apple slice for a treat. Elvis couldn't speak French. Like the bird at the school pet show, he only spoke goat. Meh, meh, he said, reaching for the apple. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you should try an easy trick, Becca said. Mason nodded. Like sit or stay. Good idea, Libby said. Elvis wouldn't sit, and when Libby told Elvis to stay, he didn't. Instead, Elvis followed Libby everywhere she went. Let's take a break, Libby said. She and her friends sat on the cool grass. Elvis must be good at something, Mason said. But what? Libby picked at a dandelion leaf. She was sad that Elvis might never star in a pet show. Elvis began to nuzzle Libby's hair and her cheek. Stop it, silly goat, laughed Libby and patted him. Mason smiled. Elvis is fun. And he loves people, Becca said when Elvis climbed onto her lap. Oh, look. That was true. Elvis made everyone laugh and he liked making friends. That's it, Libby cried. Is it a new trick for Elvis? Becca asked. Sort of, Libby said. You'll see soon. Do what she's going to do. Chapter four, big news. Later that day, Becca and Mason went home. Then Libby told her family about her new idea. You want to take Elvis to visit elderly people in retirement centers? Mom asked. Right, Libby nodded. And people in hospitals, plus kids at school, too. Parents go think. What do you think? Goat. <laughs> Dad said, I've heard of dogs doing that. But Elvis isn't a dog, Libby's brother Stuart said. Of course he isn't, Libby said. That's the best part. Wouldn't it be cool to see a goat at school? Stuart laughed. Hey, that rhymes. And I guess it would be cool. Super cool, Libby said, smiling. So mom and dad helped Libby make some phone calls. When they were finished, Elvis had lots of places to visit. Libby held up the calendar. For the next few weeks, Elvis is going to be one busy goat, she said. And you'll be a busy girl, dad said. Elvis is your goat, so you have to go with him. Dad was right. Libby and Elvis would make new friends together. I can't wait until Elvis hears the big news, Libby said. She rushed outside to tell him. Oh, look at 
chapter five, one special goal. The first place Libby and Elvis went was the retirement center. Everyone there held, petted Elvis and fed him treats. A few days later, they visited the hospital. Elvis snuggled with the patients. The nurses asked Libby to bring Elvis back again. How do you think they wanted him back again? It's like he's making everybody feel better. Aww. Now Libby and Elvis were at Libby's school. Lots of kids gathered around Elvis. They took turns reading book, books to him. Elvis sniffed the pages and said, Maybe. Hey, hey. Becca and Mason were there too. I think Elvis is a hit, Becca said. Maybe the kids will teach Elvis to read, Mason said. That would be a good trick, Libby laughed. It would be. But Elvis isn't a trick goat, after all. He's a therapy goat. Therapy goat, Becca asked. And Mason said, are you serious? Libby was serious. Turned out that Elvis didn't need to learn tricks like catching a frisbee or sorting socks. Elvis was best at just being himself. Libby thought Elvis was one special goat. Sure, Libby finally said, and it has a nice ring to it. Elvis, the therapy goat extraordinaire. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that um, its story. And in fact, we're gonna learn a little bit more about goats. So, um, fun, things, fun things about goats. Goat is a farm animal. There is, look, look at him, isn't he cute? Female goat is a doe and a young goat is called a kid. Look at there's a young goat called a kid. Looks like a kid, huh? A male goat is a billy goat or a buck. A billy goat or a buck is a, is a daddy. A kid is a baby. A goat's pupil is the shape of a rectangle. Look at their eyes. Look, it is the shape of a Rectangle, it doesn't, it's not a circle like ours, like people's pupils. Both male and female goats may have beards. So look at this handsome beard, boy. <laughs> that is one long beard. Some goats have very long hair. People can make sweaters from goat hairs. So look at this goat. <laughs> doesn't it have curly hair. Wow, isn't it amazing? Goats eat grass and other plants. Goats help farmers keep the grass short. I guess it's better than cutting the grass, huh? Having a lawnmower, having a goat mower. <laughs> Female goats give milk. Farmers must milk their goats every day. So they have goat milk. So here he is, milking the goat into a bowl. Goats are great climbers. Some goats even climb trees. <laughs> look at these goats. They look funny. Aren't they funny all up in the trees? Is that amazing or what? Look at the size of those trees. Wow. So a uh, billy goat is a male goat. A buck is a male goat. A doe is a female goat. A kid is a young goat. The pupil is the center of the eye. So um, that was kind of interesting. And as well is... Um, so there's some things, some dairy farmers are uh, working to help uh, feed people that need food. So let's watch this story, this video. A growing demand for fresh, affordable goat meat is fueling a unique business opportunity in Vermont. The Vermont Goat Collaborative, now in its second year, helps feed a cultural and dietary need for thousands of refugees from Africa, South Asia, and elsewhere. But this was more than just a sort of folklore, cute, quaint little project. This was serious demand for meat and, and something that people really very much wanted. The Collaborative takes unwanted bucklings from six local dairy farms and grows them into eating-sized goats. 
They are sold to area refugees who've had to rely on frozen imports from Australia or trips into Massachusetts for a goat that can cost hundreds of dollars. So there definitely we need like at least like once a month we need like like one the big goat. The goat project is a partnership between a refugee support organization and the Vermont Land Trust which owns Pine Island Farm. The state is letting the collaborative use the property for free until it is self-sustaining. The project director says other states have expressed interest in starting similar programs. The idea is not to get our farm huge so that we can send goats all over the country, but is to, to get a working model that then can be transferred and tweaked given people's particular situations to make it work. The farm raised and sold 80 goats last year and hopes to raise hundreds more in the years ahead. Hannah Bookdahl, Associated Press. A growing demand for fresh, affordable. So, what do you think of all those goats and baby goats? And they're all um, unwanted goats um, from the farms are being donated, and their another group is uh, allowing them to raise the goats. They like to cut the grass. They like to chew the grass, and um, they're. Um, uh, going to be used uh, for people that need uh, that need uh, to have more meat in their diet, like for refugees. So it sounds like a really cool idea. Would you like all those uh, taking care of all those goats? They love. Looks like they love running with the with the owners. It's like a lot of fun. So um, I hope you enjoyed this story time. And um, this is Bonnie Balda. I'm hoping you have a healthy, healthy and happy day and inviting you on Saturday to our, our um, library between 12 and 4.30. There's going to be um, lots of things going on. There's going to be a bounce house, a petting zoo. It's going to be an amphibian show. And uh, we're also going to have a summer reading um, completion for participant party, so handing out certificates of participation or, or completion, and then have our grand prize drawings for uh, youth, teen, and adult services. So um, we also have hot dogs and hamburgers. So I hope you can join us on Saturday. And um, since um, this is the last Wednesday night of the month, the story time is going to be moving to Tuesdays. And the series is called Back in the Library. And um, it's going to be Tuesday nights at um, 6 o'clock. So I hope you join me for the new story time. Have a, uh, you have a healthy and happy day today. Goodbye.